it's a natural reaction. They start mixing the facts in. They put their story with your story. Like that's really what happened. I remember giving you a phone call when I was on the video set mm -hmm. out there. And I said, Kirk, we need more security out here. Yes. We need more security, Kirk. Yes. Because what you had told me, <laughs> motherfucker, <laughs> to get me out there, you said, Gene, we're not going anywhere. We're going to do Soul Train. We're going to do Studio. He got a couple of meetings. He ain't doing no parties. None of that. Yeah, I might have sold you that story. And, yeah. and part of it was true because we were only supposed to be there for the function. And the way I looked at it, that night was going to be what it was. And then that very next day, I was getting on a plane to go from L.A. to Europe with Biggie, just he and I, to go and deal with the whole European press. One of the first times ever that that had happened for a rap artist. Arista, Clive Davis, a genius, and that team at the time, a genius, and what they do, never had the success in hip hop that they had until Bad Boy came along. And they repaid the favor as one of the companies that last of 13. They mm -hmm. repaid the favor by giving us a rollout with Biggie mm -hmm. that really matched the release of his second album, which we worked hard to make a double album. We're talking about mm -hmm. all of that in the book. And in the situation was that knowing it was going to be something special, he created for the first time for a rap artist a European press junket so that upon the release of the album in the States, he would have press around the world globally. Yeah, it's crazy. Now look, God ended up giving him that press anyway. Wow. Around the world. Globally. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember you called me back and you said uh, he's not paying for no more security. He's not paying for no security. I was like, and then you said, Gene, but we're going, Biggie's going to London. London. And I said, I said, all right, all right. So me and this cat is running everywhere. And I, I mean, I know I was, bu I was, bu I was bugging you, you know. I was like, "Yo, Kurt, we going here? We at this? You told me we wasn't going nowhere. I said, "We here? We there?" He said, "Yo, Gene, we gonna be out of there yeah, right after the Soul Train Awards, cause we going to Biggie is going to London. You understand?" Mm -hmm. I said, "All right, cool." So now, my whole thing about it was this: is that. I've said this numerous of times. Mm -hmm. You made it clear to me and the people out here, they might think that, oh, well, Gene, uh, why do he, why does he even know that part of the business and stuff like that? But I'm right next to him all the time when he's taking his phone. Yeah. And then... You're there with him. And so he's calling me, and everything that he says is the business. I make the business happen, and as I make the business happen, sometimes he changes his mind. Right. Because, because Kirk, am I am I am am I telling the truth when I said that he literally cursed you out about that whole London trip <laughs> that that they set up and told you that I don't give a shit, and he said he's not going to London, and Whatever you got to do for it not to happen, you better do it. More along the lines of Big's not going, you figure it out. You go. Figure it out. You understand? Because mm. I was trying to explain and break down how big of a thing this was that they did for Bad Boy. Mm -hmm. The very first time that our artists would be able to follow up. He knew that they were backing us the right way because when we launched the company, we had a big launch in Europe in London. Mm -hmm. and, and great thing now the albums are coming up we're going back to seed the soil for the success of the music and the artist like you know personality is mercurial changes like that so when you're in the midst and things are happening and you get the left right the left right and you get all these different options and decisions 
Sometimes you make decisions on the spot. And he decided that Biggie wasn't going to go. He didn't care whether I went or not, mm -hmm. but he decided that Biggie wasn't going to go. Right. It didn't make sense for me to go. All those people in Europe wasn't was looking for Biggie. They were looking for Biggie. <laughs> so it turned out to be a Saturday morning conflict that I had to figure out where most people on the East Coast was on a weekend, mm -hmm. and they're thinking we're in the air, and there's hundreds of journalists formulating, flying in from where they're flying in to meet us in London. But, Kirk, you couldn't... It, it was Thursday when he was, when he was just sitting in the limousine and he was telling you to figure it out and everything like that. You had at least two days. No, it actually was Friday. Well, listen, it actually was whatever day we were supposed to fly was the day after the awards show. I think the awards show was a Friday night. Right. And then that Saturday morning, we were supposed to be at the airport very right. early. No celebration. But I'm talking about when he told you Thursday. He told you, because I, I think you mentioned it to him. I know that you mentioned it to him while we was in the limousine. Here's the, point. Here's the point. It's a schedule that he knew we were supposed to do. He knew how big it was. Right. So someone needles at you. It's like a, a, a like, I don't know if you have children or, you know, as they go through a growing phase, they know they're supposed to do something, but they want to do something else. So they begin to needle you about the something else as if you might have forgot what they were supposed to do mm -hmm. and begin to set the stage that I'm not doing that. So it started on Thursday with, what are you talking about? And I'm like, he's bugging. Friday, we need to get that thing. We need to have that party, do whatever we're going to do, or go to the Soul Train, have that good time, be at the airport on time. So we, this mm -hmm. huge is big. He called Friday night after the awards show. Something must have been going on. That's he was like, no, not going anywhere. I was up from... Whatever time that was in L.A., three, four, five, six, to the time we were supposed to be at the airport, seven, calling Biggie, trying to coordinate. Biggie went along with what his plan was. And he still got global coverage because what happened... That's crazy. What hey, happened, that's some deep shit. <laughs> what happened that next night, nobody wanted to have happened. We probably wouldn't have wanted to go if we knew that that was going to happen. We knew there was a chance for something to happen, but we didn't know it could be that that would happen. And we knew to be on point, and that's why we were trying to be as secure as possible. In the middle of those changes, doing this, doing that. You remember cussing me out yes, the next I day? Yeah. I was like, yo, um, somebody gave you some felonious information because Arista was calling me. Arista was calling me because we had I had did a job uh, and I didn't know Arista was the one who was paying me for the job. You understand? It didn't come out of bad boy budget. Sometimes some of those functions were promotional function direct from them and they cut the budget direct. Right. Sometimes out of our budget we did it and sometimes it was good to have them do it because then we got the promotion right. didn't have to pay for it. Uh, See I didn't know that. Too. So what the person from Arista was calling me telling me that they needed my social security number. Mm -hmm. And I was like, who is this? And hanging up on that. <laughs> and so when we was out there, um, I think, no, you told me, you said, Gene, Arista is trying to pay you your money yeah, 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 and everything yeah. like that. Why you keep hanging up on them? I said, they, they talk about damn social security number. <laughs> it might have been something that they, 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 they paid for a portion right. of what we were doing in the show right. at the awards show for Biggie, all the things that we were doing. So some of the monies that came from that, we were able to pay the right. staff and the team. If you remember that ill-fated weekend, I had the whole company out there. Mm -hmm. Every intern. Right. Every street guy, team. Street every team. Everybody. I had about 30 people, 25 people. And at the time that uh, uh, the incident happened, we had to scramble to get from out of L.A., scramble to figure out what was going on with Biggie in the mm -hmm. time that it was happening in real time, scramble to make sure none of the kids would be exposed, sticking out like sore thumbs from the east. Right. And not knowing what is going on, um, and get hurt. We we're trying to minimize that. Um, I thank God for that day, for all the people that we had around, including you and all of everyone that had to galvanize mm -hmm. and pull it together and get everyone back home safe. From buddies, fellas, fellas, from buddies, women. It's a trait that's passed down from old heads right now to their children.